Hi everyone, this is Minister Esther and today God placed in my heart a quick word and I pray that it will be a blessing to someone. It is very important that when you are going through a marital problems that you really know who to talk to. When you read Proverbs chapter 14, Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1, he says the wise woman builds her house but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. You see, during that time, it is so important that you choose to build. During that time, it's so important that you choose to build. And even in case that you have to reach out to someone, that you make sure that the person that you're going to give or you're going to tell your private information to is one, God-fearing, two, prayerful, and three, a person that can keep a secret or that is very confidential. It is so important that you speak to someone that is God-fearing because remember that you don't want someone to give you a good counsel. A good counsel doesn't mean it's godly. You want someone that fear God, that can speak the mind of God, that can give you a godly counsel, what God is saying. So you want to choose someone or you want to reach out to someone that is God-fearing. Most of the time, the problems that goes on in marriage is not physically alone. It could be due to spiritually. So you also want someone that is prayerful so the person can now stand in the gap with you or join you in prayer. You want somebody that will help you to intercede, will help you or will maybe uphold your hand in prayer. So that is why it's so important that the person that you're speaking to make sure that the person is prayerful so that they will not only give you godly counsel but they will also join you in prayers so that so that that one you'll be able to overcome every forces that is fighting against your marriage it is so important it is so important that you also speak to someone that is very confidential remember that god will definitely restore your marriage but if that person that you reach out to and you speak your private information to if that person is not confidential cannot keep a secret meaning that all your private information will be out there and once god resolve the marriage that may not be good information that is out there so you want someone that is one god fearing two prayerful and three very confidential so that you know that your information they will be able to keep it secret for you and it is so important that during that time too that we guide our tongue we guide our tongue because we all know that words are very powerful words are very powerful and once and once you speak those words, like one thing I know that during that time, I know that you are hurt. So you want to speak out what is in your mind. But according to the word of God, God doesn't want us. Like I'm not saying that don't be truthful, but make sure that every word that is coming is something that builds. It's words that edify. It's not words that tears down or words that pulls down. Because when you read Proverbs 29, Proverbs 29 verse 11, and I think, let me go there so that we will read it, so that all of us we will learn from it. That during that time, even though you are hurt, you want to speak your mind. But there's some information that you have to keep. Because the thing is that like once you speak these words, know that words are very powerful. It can build and it can pull down. And the thing is that it's very hard for people to forget words. So any words that doesn't edify, any word that doesn't build, you don't, you might not want to say it because it will it will be damaging. It will be damaging to your spouse and you want to stay away from words, from negative words that are not going to build. And when you read Proverbs 29 verse 11, let me go there. Proverbs 29 verse 11. It say a fool vent all his feelings. A fool 
vent all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. Other other translation will say that it's a fool that utters everything in their heart. Because if you know that the words are hurting, if you know that the words are going to pull your partner down, even though that time you are hurting, and because the word of God advises us that we have to build and not to tear down, you might want to keep those words. You don't want to utter them. Because the thing is that your words have to be edifying. Your words have to be seasoned with salt. And it has to build your partner by not to tear them down. And when you also read Colossians, when you read Colossians 4 verse 6, Colossians 4 verse 6, it says, let your speech always be with grace. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Let, But the main thing that I want you to know is I said, let your speech always be seasoned with grace. So it means that the words that you are going to speak, is it graceful? Is it impactful? Is it edifying? Or is my words going to make situation worse? The word of God is advising us that during that time, if you know that your words are going to tear down your partners more, or like he's going to put more fire into what is going on, then God really advised that during that time. Silence is, is, is the key. Then it means that during that time, just learn to be silent and don't speak it. That doesn't mean that you don't reach out or you just keep silence and suffer. No, you, you speak out. That's, that's why I said that during that time, like in case that like you cannot handle it and you have to reach out to someone, then make sure that the person that you're reaching out to is somebody that is God-fearing, somebody that is prayerful, and somebody that is confidential. So that those information, those private information that you, you, you release can be kept. And also when you read Ephesians, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 verse 29. Ephesians 4 verse 29. So all this is we guiding our mouth and during that time knowing exactly what to say and also who to reach out to. Who to reach out to. So if you if you can turn your Bible with me to Ephesians 4.29. Ephesians 4.29 say, Let no corrupt words proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification? So here God is saying that whatever word that, that is coming now have to be something that is edifying, not something that is corrupt, not something that is hurtful, not something that that it will take forever for your partner to forget. Because remember, during that season, you think that, oh, everything is falling apart. But the thing is that if you believe God and you trust in God for marriage restoration, then know that God is so faithful. He's not a man and God will not lie. God is so faithful and I want you to have faith that God will definitely restore the marriage. But then the words that you're saying, remember that your partner will not forget those words. So during that time, even though you are hurting and even though so many things are going on, you want to still guide your mouth. You want to still guide your tongue and whatever words that you're saying, make sure that the word is edifying. Because here in Ephesians 4 verse 29, it says that let he said that let no corrupt words proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the bearer or to the hearer. So here he's saying that the words that you speak in, make sure that the person that is hearing these words, it will impact grace. So during that time, just as Proverbs 14, he said that a wise woman builds his own house and it goes with the man. A wise man also builds his own house house so you want to make sure that whatever words that you saying that you are actually saying the words that will build the words that will edify the words that will impart grace to your partner and don't take your partner for granted even though there might be problems going on you still want to watch what you say and just as i said that during that time too you don't want to maybe keep everything to yourself if you can't solve it you want to reach out to someone that is one god fearing 
why like why is it so important that you reach out to someone that is god fearing so that they will be able to speak the mind of god that they will be able to give you a godly counsel a godly counsel that will build your home and also someone that is prayerful so that they will be able to st now stand in the gap with you or join you in your faith to lift you up in prayers because we know that in most cases some of the problems that goes on in marital situation or marital homes are not physical it's spiritual so you need someone that will uphold your hand in prayer and also someone that is very confidential someone that will be able to keep your word to keep your private information secret and also we have to watch exactly what we say and where we say it. during that time you don't want to share most of the things that are going on with your family members that are not godly or family members that doesn't have, have the mind of god because the thing is that they may they may give you good counsel but it might not be a godly counsel and also in your workplace you don't want to share any negative information or say any negative things concerning your spouse because the thing is that when the restoration comes which i know it will come and later on they see your partner trust me maybe you would have forgiven your partner but remember that them they they wouldn't they will still see your partner the way that you described it or the way that you describe him or her to them so during that time we have to make sure that we don't tear down our partner or we don't disgrace them publicly or we don't say any negative things concerning them in the public place or in your workplace it's so important and for you to really to understand um what i'm saying like in case like you have this movie it's a it's a gospel movie that it blessed me so much when i watched it the message was so powerful the title of the movie is fireproof so in this movie um the main character was caleb and he was the one that was having marital issue and the wife was Catherine and you could see that like over there like like when it came to a, a point like where they couldn't handle it again I mean they couldn't handle or they couldn't solve the issue that was going on in their marriage of course they reach out to a family member but for this time that that, that family member which is Caleb's dad was a god fearing so it doesn't matter if in your family if you can find someone that is god fearing that's fine but in case you can then you can reach out to maybe your pastor or somebody or an elderly person in your church or somebody that you know that is god fearing the main thing is that the person have to be god fearing so that they can speak the mind of god or so that they can give you a godly counsel so in this movie Caleb reached out to the dad and the dad was a God fearing and God gave a good godly counsel that helped them. And also you could see example like where Kathleen also went to the workplace and started saying all the negative things about the husband. And in the movie, you could see that even like when the husband had hurt himself and went to the hospital, you could see the negative, like the way that they were treating him. They were treating him that way, all because of what they heard Kathleen said about, about him. And also you could see that when Kathleen went to the coworkers to tell them about the marital issue that was going on, like because they weren't godly, they were giving her a good advice but that good advice wasn't godly wasn't what god was saying so it's so important that in case like we are going through or in case like you are going through any marital issue that you reach out but when you reach out make sure that you know exactly who to reach out to make sure the person fear god make sure that the person is prayerful and make sure the person is confidential so that they will be able to keep your private information that you share with them and also so that they will be able to stand in the gap with you to pray you through that situation it is my prayer right now i pray for anyone that is going through a marital issue. I pray that the Lord himself
I pray that the Lord himself will bring restoration. I pray that the Lord himself, the Holy Spirit himself will guide you, will teach you, will help you. Like I know it's difficult, but trust me, if you allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lead you. The Holy Spirit will direct you. The Holy Spirit will guide you, will bring someone into your life that can give you a godly counsel that can help you to pray. And in case like you need more prayers, if you go to YouTube and you type in KL Blessing, there's a lot of prayers about mar marital restoration. And also there is a book written by Reverend KL Blessing. It calls Emergency for Emergency Prayers for Marriage Restoration. If you if you can get that book, that book to have a lot of godly wisdom, godly counsel and prayers that can also help. I pray that the Lord help you through this difficult time. And I want you to have faith and know that definitely God will restore that marriage. God will bring peace. God will bring unity. God will bring understanding. God will bring love, peace into your home in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.